Now to a Target 12 investigator's exclusive costly crime. The video tells the story. Thieves crawling underneath cars to steal a catalytic converter. It's a national problem and data we obtain show it has hit home at an alarming rate. I wish the police would figure out who's buying them uh, and shut down the market. Target 12 investigator Steph Machado has been looking into the scope of this issue in Rhode Island. Steph joins us now in studio with what's being done to stop it. Police say it is hard to catch the thieves who commit this increasingly common theft. So they are now looking to crack down on the market for stolen converters. It was almost 2.30 in the morning on Halloween and three men appeared in Justin Boyan's driveway on College Hill. Uh, one guy hops out with a jack, another guy hops out with a sawzall. Boyan's surveillance camera captures them stealing the catalytic converter from underneath his Toyota Prius. And it took them a minute and 20 seconds. The one guy jacks up the car, other guy comes around, makes his two cuts, and then they're driving away. Boyan is one of more than 500 victims of this crime in Providence this year, a theft that was practically unheard of five years ago. There were no catalytic converter thefts reported in 2017, according to Providence police data obtained by Target 12. The crime slowly caught on in the following years, but skyrocketed in 2021 to 387 thefts. In 2022, rising even higher, 542 thefts just in the first three quarters of this year. Uh, we have a, uh, a shop increase this year. It's because of the precious metal that's inside a catalytic converter. They uh, contain platinum, palladium, and rhodium, and they're at a very high price now. Police Captain Timothy O'Hara calls it low-hanging fruit for thieves, easy to access and quick to steal. They happen everywhere in the city. They happen at night, during the day, they happen in busy areas. Like this theft in a parking lot in Wayland Square back in May. In broad daylight with people and cars passing by, a man in a pickup truck jumps out of his car and disappears under the vehicle next to his. 30 seconds later, he's back up into his truck and driving away. The victim discovered the theft hours later leaving work. These photos from the police report show the missing converter under her SUV. It's a very quick operation and it seemingly goes unnoticed a lot of the time. Target 12 found the crime is sharply increasing across Rhode Island, soaring from just eight cases reported in 2017 to 1,466 so far this year, according to data compiled by Target 12 from police departments statewide. After Providence, the most cases are happening in Pawtucket, Warwick, and Cranston. O'Hara says it's a difficult crime to solve. Providence police have made just two arrests in those hundreds of cases this year. Sometimes we'll catch people in a separate investigation with a, a load of catalytic converters, but the problem is which vehicle do they belong to. There's no identification stamp on a catalytic converter. So although we know they're stolen, matching them up with which crime they're connected to is, is almost impossible. Thieves get pennies on the dollar for the stolen converters, but it can cost thousands for vehicle owners to replace them. Boyan's replacement cost $3,500, in his case covered by insurance. It's almost like you've got a laptop or something just strapped on the underside of your car. and They just come and take it away. Providence is trying to crack down on the market for the stolen converters. A new ordinance approved by the city council in April requires scrap metal businesses and junkyards to collect a long list of documents from the person selling the car part, including a bill of sale or other proof of ownership of the converter. This month, the city is delivering copies of the ordinance to 70 businesses. And it's also important that this investigative report is being done because it will allow uh, chop shops and uh, scrap metal yards uh, to know that this inf uh, this ordinance is going to be enforced. I hope they find who's really profiting from these and shut them down. There is also a new state law in place similar to Providence's ordinance. No businesses have been issued fines yet under either new law. With the Target 12 investigators, Steph Machado, 12 News. New details now in our Target 12 investigators exclusive costly crime. At five, we showed you how rampant catalytic converter thefts are in the state. New at six, how a local business took things into their own hands to try and stop thieves. Target 12 investigator Steph Machado is here now with her findings on the extent of this problem in Rhode Island. Catalytic converters can be stolen in seconds. It's part of why police say it's hard to catch thieves. We found that uh, an individual had been coming in a couple days actually and 
taking stuff from us. Daniel Walser was getting fed up after multiple thefts at his business. So the replacement is almost $8,000 on those. In September, half a dozen catalytic converters were stolen from Walser Mobile Refrigeration in Warwick. Some cut out of trucks, others from a storage unit. The suspect caught on camera dragging the massive diesel converter across the back lot and through a fence into the woods. He left some of the converters on a hill. Walser figuring the crook was planning to come back. So he threw an Apple Air tag in the uh, exhaust heat shield, kind of just stuffed it in there and said, well, if they come back, at least we'll know about it. And uh, sure enough, he did come back on Monday. Walser used the tracking device to trace one converter to a business called Accurate Converter in Providence, where the suspect had already sold it and was gone. The next day, he was back for another he left behind. Walser tracked that air tag to a gas station nearby and confronted William Hazard, finding him with the diesel converter in his sedan. And I said, excuse me, that's mine next to and he's like oh someone gave it to me and I'm like no it just left our property it's been tracked I know you took it. Police arrested Hazard a habitual offender who is now at the ACI. Warwick PD writing in their report Hazard said quote when I get out I'll just go back over there watch. It's very frustrating. Catalytic converter thefts are rising at a staggering rate, according to a Target 12 analysis of police department data across Rhode Island. In 2017, just eight thefts were reported across the state. In 2021, that number skyrocketed above 1,000. This year so far has already surpassed last year's number, 1,466 as of October and climbing. It's because of the precious metal that's inside a catalytic converter. In Providence, with more than 500 thefts this year and counting, Captain Timothy O'Hara said, as arrests are rare. Sometimes we'll catch people in a separate investigation with a, a load of catalytic converters, but the problem is which vehicle do they belong to. There's no identification stamp on a catalytic converter. The auto industry could help with that, O'Hara says. Put the VIN number on it or some uh, metal covering so that they can't so easily cut the catalytic converter out. Police are also starting to enforce a new ordinance passed by the Providence City Council in April, requiring businesses to collect a long list of documents and proof of ownership from the person selling the converter. This ordinance has some teeth in it through fines, uh, possible suspensions, all the way up to revocation. Well, you shouldn't be able to turn in five, ten converters a week uh, with no paperwork behind it. O'Hara says Accurate Converter, the business where William Hazard is accused of selling Walser's property, was the first one brought before the licensing board by police under the new ordinance. They were issued a warning. Owner Brian Tatro tells me he wasn't aware of the new city ordinance before this case, now saying, quote, we have every intention of following the law. We never want to purchase a stolen converter. We want to be part of the solution, not the problem. No Providence businesses have been issued fines yet under the new ordinance, according to police. A similar state law was passed in June. The Attorney General's office says to date they have not cited any businesses for violating the law. With the Target 12 investigators, I'm Steph Machado, 12 News.